it's not you, you're all good. I don't got a problem with nobody here. <clears throat> no, but before I came out, they had, you know, the TV in the dressing room and, uh, you know, I'm not a political comic. You, anybody here that knows me, you know, but sometimes when something's bothering you, you just got to say it. So there he is again on TV, this asshole. <laughs> No, you don't even understand, and he's doing it again. And I'm watching this, and I'm thinking, millions and millions of people followed you, got behind you, believed in you. And then, in one second, without thinking, he goes over the sprint. <laughs> believe what I was watching and bragging about it sprint the worst fucking network ever where you lose the call as you're dialing it you know years ago they used to go you yeah, call lost you don't even get that fucking time anymore they write things on your phone now sprint like you fucking asshole how long is it going to take for you to understand we're the fucking worst? We suck dick. <laughs> but you know what? I believe in Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not the first time I saw this asshole on TV saying this. Yeah, I'm Paul. I go, and I know who you are now, Paul. I'm going to meet you one day, Paul. I went over to Verizon like a week ago. You'll understand this. You got a phone, right? And I come in there, and you know, the people, let me, let me tell you right now, if you, anybody here work in a phone store, that's, that's it for you, you know that. <laughs> you know you have failed. Like when, when you meet a chick and she goes, so where do you work? The phone store. She's walking away. Now, if you could look at a girl and go, me, I'm head barista at Starbucks. I'm busy from the time I walk in to the time I leave. I'm frapping it out. I'm the one giving you cream on the top of your fuck up. There you go, honey. Nice big fucking tits. Nice to me. How you doing? So I go into Verizon, you know, and I go when I know there's nobody there. But I'm like everybody else, like you know when you're going to the phone store. Because we all just have that one question. But you know it's going to be three hours. Because the people that work there hate it so fucking much. They're going to make you fucking miserable. So I come walking in the phone store. And I come over, there's like five salesmen, there's one with a customer in the corner. And I come over to this other salesman, and I go, yeah, I just got a quick question. And he goes, uh, you gotta sign up and you'll see your name come up. There's nobody here. <laughs> Except for the guy in the corner, which I got mad about because, you know, when things are quiet, you hear shit. And it was a, it was a, an older guy than you, I'll put it to you that way. Wasn't quite as old as me, but he was older than you. So the guy's in the corner and I hear him fucking whispering, I think I might have a virus. You know, and I'm the guy that can't handle that. So from across the store, I got too much pussy, right? Yeah, I know, you thought it was fucking free, asshole. It's all fucking connected. They tell you that, we're all connected. Everybody knows the pussy you're looking at. Your kids know the pussy you're fucking looking at. Because they take your phone and they look at it after you think you didn't fucking download it. See, that's the thing. Wait. If you're any kind of man, you got to understand this. We all love our porn. But I'm not afraid to walk into an adult fucking toy store 
that used to fuck us over with DVDs for $49. <laughs> and you could walk in there today, five DVDs, 15 fucking dollars. You could jerk off till you actually ripped the balls off your fucking dick. That's how much jerking, you could jerk off into the new year. Nobody, will, for 15 fucking dollars. I told this asshole, 850 for the new phone, cause you ain't gonna have an upgrade. You know this is not your first time at the fucking horse races. They're gonna talk you into new headphones cause you can't plug it in the asshole of the phone anymore. And you're gonna buy a new fucking speaker, you dumb fuck. And I throw them out of the fucking store. So now, I get all the sales, man. I say, come here, I gotta talk to you guys. You guys heard about Paul, right? And one of the salesmen goes, who? So I throw him out of the fucking store. Cause like during the day, I carry this like pipe. It, it, it helps you cut lines. If you go into Starbucks and there's a long line and you got like a big metal pipe, people will let you cut the line, it's amazing. So I throw that salesman out, and I go, this is what I'm gonna do, because Paul's over at Sprint right now. I go, but I'm sticking with you guys. So what I want, give me two phones. I want two, I want your best fucking phone. You decide for me what I need. I go, one of the phones is for me. And one is the one that my chick won't find out about. <laughs> because what you seem to not understand is these women today that we go out with, they like to challenge you when you start dating them. Oh, you'll never be able to cheat on me. <laughs> because you don't understand what you're trying to sleep, this fucking animal that you live with, it's taking your phone and putting it across your face for the recognition. She's rolling your thumb across your fucking phone like you get booked at the police station. That's why you wake up in the morning and go, I thought I had like nightmares of people pulling at me and holding me down. What I do with the sec that my second phone never comes into my house. It's under my car, on the muffler, attached to a fucking magnet. And I grab it before I get in the car and I send a text, you dirty little whore, I'll be there in three fucking minutes. You'll never be able to cheat on me. It's all I do. Once you challenge me, I'll fuck your best friend. I'll figure out how I could fuck your sister. Because we live in a crazy world today. People are out of their mind. I'll tell you the truth. I was in Chick fil A. Yeah! I don't know, you laugh. It's the hottest fucking chicken you can get now. They buried the fucking Colonel. Nobody's talking about Kentucky Fried anymore. It's all about Chick fil A, right? So I'm in there. I mean, they got me a little mad with the pickles. I, I just don't understand why people decide we want pickles under our chicken. And that's why I have the pipe. Because <laughs> I bang it on the counter and I go, take the pickles out from under the chicken. I don't want the pickles with the chicken. Who decided there's going to be, it's the best fucking chicken. Pickles don't go with fucking chicken. So now I tell the guy I gotta use the bathroom, right? So I go over and I see one bathroom that says women. And the other bathroom says, uh, like all genders. And I'm gonna tell you people the truth about me. People here that might not know me. I wasn't the smartest guy in school. I know I come across like I am. <laughs> Like I knew words in school like and, 
the, that, I was great with that shit. In the first grade, I had that shit down. Boy, girl, dick, pussy was big. Pussy's a few extra letters, but I learned it. But I didn't look for words in the dictionary like gender. I didn't know what that meant. So I come back to the chicken man and I go, what's the other bedroom that's near the girls? Like, am I allowed in? And he basically explains that, like it's for half chicks. You know, that's like the popular thing now, half chicks. You know, like I used to talk about it years ago, but nobody was listening to me. Like I would talk about gays, I would talk about lesbians, and I would talk about trans testicles at the time. I'd say you meet the girl of your dreams, you whine a diner, you put your hand up a skirt, you're holding a tree trunk. You know, you know, 30 years ago, we just called them freak of fucking natures. Nothing to do with gender, just freak of fucking nature, right? So now it's a whole gender thing, right? So I go in the bathroom, I'm using the urinal, and all of a sudden, in the mirror, here comes beautiful girl, big fucking cow tits. She comes over to the urinal. She takes out a cock bigger than my fucking arm. I mean, it was longer, it was fatter. I never knew a cock could have like an elbow in it. And she's holding this thing like a fucking fire plug. It's splattering on me. It's not even like a piss hole. It opened up like a fucking blowhole. And I'm looking at my own dick. I'm walking out embarrassed. I got like a regular everyday run around cock. No girl's ever gonna go, oh, I can't take anymore more of that. Gets the job done, that's it. And I'm thinking about the guy with the two foot cock on. Why is he in Chick fil A? <laughs> if I had a two foot dick and a pair of tits, I'd never leave the fucking house. The only thing, I'd be fucking myself between the tits constantly. I'd be blowing loads on the back wall of my fucking bedroom. The only thing I'd need my fucking phone for is to call a Chinese restaurant to bring over some carbs to keep fucking going. But what made, what made the whole half chick thing happen is Bruce Jenner. He made it fucking popular. This is how nuts the world is when, see, I watch the Kardashians, I'm into them, I like them, okay? And I would see all those episodes where Bruce would sit on the couch. There was so much dick coming in and out of that fucking house. Picture him walking the hallways at night, hearing the walls and the beds banging against the walls. Every now and then he'd pass the bedroom and he's hearing, duh, duh, duh. And he went, you know what, fuck it. I'm cutting this whole fucking thing off. I'm gonna have the tightest fucking most industrial rubberized pussy in the fucking house. You won't be able to stick a number two pencil in my pussy. That's how fucking tight my fucking box is gonna be. He threw on a set of fucking tits and a wig. And then I saw the big interview that Caitlin now did. And I'm looking at her going, you know what? I fucked worse. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you the truth, I once fucked a chick looked exactly like Schmack. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I did it for you guys. <laughs> because I know the kind of pussy you guys, you look for tens. You, you waste the whole weekend, oh, look how fucking hot. I look for the thing sitting in a pool that you think is gonna be airlifted and dropped back into the ocean. <laughs> And I go and fuck that. When I fucked that girl like Shrek, she had a big bald spot just like Shrek. As she's blowing me, it would sweat and beat up like a puddle after it rained. And I did that for you. So I'm looking at Caitlin, going, yeah, I fucked that, yeah. And you wanna know something, guys? 
I think just about any guy in this room would fuck Caitlyn, and I'll tell you why. Because none of us are ever gonna get the fucking Olympic champion. <laughs> Look at that. That after you bang her, huh? you're out in that big Kardashian backyard doing Olympic shit. That you could go fucking sprinting, running, racing, take the giant pogo stick, jump over the other fucking stick. There's not a chick in the room. And you know that after you bang a chick, we all turn around and go, honey, do me a favor, rub my back. And within three minutes, you go, come on, take your fucking fingers in. <laughs> you don't feel that? Not with Caitlyn. Caitlyn's got those animal thumbs, those Olympic fucking strong fucking hands that are just digging into your fucking back. And you feel so good, you go, you know what? Fuck me in the ass again. Go ahead. Go ahead. Have a good fucking time. I love you. This is a crazy fucking world we live in. Come on. You know what I mean? They gotta like, they, they gotta rewrite the Bible. I'm telling you something. Because like, you know, when they wrote the Bible, like everything's gone so berserk in the world, right? You know, so berserk that, you know, you people get all guilty, like even if you go out and steal something. See, I love to steal. It, it, it gives me pleasure. But I know you go to your churches and your temples and there's the rules that were written, I don't know, like, uh, you know, like, you know, like in the caveman days when they wrote that book. And they wrote things like, thou shalt not steal. You gotta understand something. When they wrote the book, there was nothing to steal. <laughs> that was an easy rule that these guys are sitting around going, throw it in, thou shalt not steal. That people go through their whole fucking life going, I can't afford a fucking thing. You know, you know, they write rules like thou shalt love thy neighbor. I, I, I want to see my neighbor crushed. <laughs> by a fucking Mack truck. That's how much I hate this fucking woman. I don't look at her, I don't talk to her. I've thought of killing her cat a thousand fucking times, but I don't want to take it out on the cat because I hate her more. You know, because when they said, thou shalt love that neighbor, your neighbor lived in another fucking city. You didn't live 10 feet away with three shrubs between the fucking houses that you're looking in my window while I'm getting my dick fucking sucked? Was it not a fucking city? Love thy neighbor, don't fucking steal. Let me tell you something. I go into the grocery immediately. I go, give me a pound of turkey, right? Then I go to the bread aisle and I put the turkey on some fucking bread and I eat it and I don't feel bad when I check out and then I destroy the bread that's overpriced. Dave's fucking bread, where did that come from? I grew up with Aura Wee, Wonder Bread. Who the fuck is Dave all of a sudden that you don't even question this in the fucking grocery store? Nobody ever goes over to the, to the manager of the grocery and go, who the fuck is Dave? They write a thing about Dave on the fucking, he was a fucking murderer. He's been in jail for fucking years. And I'm gonna trust this fucking guy not to poison me? The fuck does he know about bread? He knows about assholes. He knows about doughy assholes. But I don't wanna make a sandwich on one. I steal everything in the fucking grocery. Here, I like Gillette razor blades, right? I like the name Gillette. $15.99 for three razors. Think I can't get it out of the package and put it in my sock? Don't ever feel bad about stealing. You go to Macy's, right? Underwear, Calvin Klein, black, boxes, $22.50, if you pay. <laughs> you want the box with the alarm? Go in the dressing room, put on six pair and walk out the front fucking door. And on your way out, steal a tester bottle of cologne. Don't spend $90, all you need is two sprays for your balls. That's it. How about thou, thou shalt not convert your, your friend's wife, meaning like, 
don't fuck your friend's wife. Now you gotta understand, in the olden days, when they wrote that rule, like I watch biblical shows. Like you ever see uh, Little House on the Prairie? That's a pretty biblical, with uh, Michael uh, Douglas, whatever, asshole cancer, whatever his name was. Remember that? Somehow the asshole got infected. Not my fault, right? So in that show, asshole cancer, would tell his wife, I'm gonna go into town, have a couple beers. When I get back, you know, finish the chores that I gave you, like, uh, you know, put some tile on the roof, you know, milk the fuck. Another thing in the grocery. Look at me when I talk to you. All right, me and you, since we're like becoming friends, we're gonna travel the Midwest together. You wanna talk about how fucked up the world is today? We're gonna travel the Midwest, and me and you together are gonna find the cow, okay? This particular cow that's pissing out almond milk. <laughs> it don't exist. But you don't go to the manager and say, where the fuck is this cow? I can't find regular milk anymore. And who decided potato chips are gonna burn the tongue out of your fucking head? I used to go to a barbecue and feel safe. Have some salt chips, you wanna get crazy, a couple barbecue chips. I went to a barbecue on the 4th of July. I had two potato chips. My whole fucking head went numb. I could have done a root canal on myself. But nobody's questioning this. And then since they got away with making every fucking potato chip burning hot, they started fucking with popcorn. Yeah, all of a sudden, Pepe fucking popcorn. All your life you go to the movies, give me butter popcorn, that's it. No pepper. And what the fuck is sea salt? Any time I was in the ocean and I got a little water up, the fuck, I don't want that on my food. You're just going along with the program. And let me tell you something, another thing. All this shit with the girls, with the instant cereals. What's in it? Not instant cereal. I don't even think, I don't even think that's a word. The, you know, the things that they're yelling about. Not instant cereal, that's not accusationals. All right, see, I figured it out. No, you know what it is. See, when Donnie Trump was trying out for president, this is how this whole thing started. Do you remember when, when he did the little movie with that kid on the bus? The kid was like going through a whole thing where he wasn't getting some box for a while. And Donnie told him, look, you see a chick you like, grab a pussy. I couldn't believe that this man was actually able to make a law like that before he even became president. Because two weeks after I heard that, I'm playing some place in Oklahoma, right? Pretty girl gets on, on like an escalator in this red beautiful, she was a pretty girl. So I didn't want her to think I didn't think she looked good. So I put my hand under her dress. I'm like, yeah, how you doing? What are you going out for a couple of drinks? The Donnie Trump law, right? And then, what was the repercussion for him doing that? He becomes president. There was no trial. There was that one lady that came on um, Bradley Anderson's Cooper Smith. Anderson Cooper Smith show. She was like 73 years old, right? And what she said, this is how I knew it was all. She said that Donnie fist fucked her on a first class seat. Now you gotta understand. I was watching this with my sons, because I like to bring my sons up the right way and teach them right from wrong. So I said, let's see what this lady has to say, right? So Anderson says to us, so what happened with Donnie? And she goes, well first, 
We got on the plane and he started talking to me. So I stopped the, I stopped the, the, the TV with the remote control I have. You know those TVs that got that now? So I stopped, it, I stopped the movie for a minute and I go, you see that? It's one of the first things I taught you boys. Don't ever talk to fucking strangers. I fucking told you that, right? So there she is talking to him. She goes, then when we took off, we started having a couple drinks. I go, look at this. She's getting all fucking lick it up. And then she says, and, and let me tell you, she might have been 73 years old, but I could see the kind of tits that she had. Like these real fucking cow tits, you know what I'm talking about? Just fucking hanging down and even at 73 years old. I would fuck those tits. I like them. You gotta put your phone down. This isn't a Martin Scorsese film. So anyway, right, forget it, just enjoy it. So anyway, you know, I'm trying to stay focused on her tits, but I don't like what she's saying because then she goes, after we had a couple of drinks, he now fist fucked me. And that's when I was like infuriated. And I stopped the fucking movie again, the Anderson show, whatever. And I get up and I tell my kids, I go, you know, I would never tell you the wrong thing. Because I'm a good man. And I go, and I was married to your mother a long time. I loved her. I did a million tours. She would come all over the, the fucking globe with me. We'd be in first class. I go, I know everything. Everything you could get away with in first class. I go, yeah, we'd get on a flight, I'd tug on her fucking tits a little for a couple laughs. We'd have a couple drinks, I'd fucking bite into her neck. Maybe I'd get her in the bedroom, I'd get a finger in there. She'd jerk me off under the blanket if it's a night flight. You don't have any loop, but she'd spit in her hand like any nice woman would and put me to sleep that the last thing I'm gonna hear is we're on our final descent into LA. I go, but but nobody's getting fist fucked in first class. Logistically, it's fucking impossible to turn you around that way. And I, this woman's a fucking liar, I says. And that's how he got elected. Now what gets me angry about that, couple months after he gets elected, my friend, Somebody you love, somebody you watch on TV, Louis C.K., gets thrown off his show and not allowed to perform because he dropped a little load on some Berber carpet in a Holiday Inn. <laughs> Think of that. Think of this poor guy. You gotta understand, Louis is not a good looking man. <laughs> See, we can make fun of Donald, his hair, his ugly, but he's known as a nice looking guy. Ugly never wins in this world. Picture Louie, desperate, he's got his own TV show. He made it in show business, and you still can't get pussy. <laughs> that you get so lost and feel so alone that you're in a hotel room naked, against the door, naked Louie, looking like the cover of Mad Magazine with freckles all over. <laughs> jerking his dick and the girl is screaming a fucking head off screaming guys you know how hard it is to jerk off with noise we want it quiet we want to be in an easy chair we want our chicks asleep we want to blow goo all over our fucking bellies but there's poor louis with the lights on naked with his belly and jerking his dick but yet he completed the job. And for that, he gets thrown off a TV. Instead of them bringing him up on the Academy Awards with a little gold statue and a nice shiny gold dip with a mushroom dip, going, you're the first man to complete that action with all that noise going on. And then the guys just kept getting uglier. Here comes Al Franken. I think he lost his job before his load hit his fucking shoes. But then a hero comes through. That's right. Here comes Chachi. Scott Bayo. Some chick saying he stuck his pinky in her asshole or something. 
And he goes, bitch, I'm good looking, I'm Charles in charge. You signed off on my pinky. Girls, listen to me. I love you, I'm here to help everybody. Like I'm looking at nice, pretty girls. They look beautiful tits with a boy. Remember when you met her and saw those fucking tits? Like what were you thinking? I gotta get to know her so we could talk about the problems in Iraq? You were thinking about her rack. You were thinking about that moment where they climb on top and not the way they did 40 fucking years ago when I started out. When a girl climbed on top back then, they draw like a lazy leg over. They nearly break your hip with their fucking knee. And then they sit there like they're waiting for a bus. Till you couldn't take it anymore and drew her off and said, let me finish this. No, not today. These new school girls, this new generation that grew up on the internet, that grew up on porn, they stand over you. They look down at you with disgust. They make that fucking duck face that... And they don't just sit on your cock, they squat on your cock. They squat like a dog taking a dump in the fucking bar. Bouncing their fat fucking ass into your balls till they're black and blue. That's why Tempur-Pedic became the biggest bet in the world. That you could get off the bed after one of your chicks just smashes in your ball. You'll see your ball prints all memorized all over the fucking bed. With them big fucking tits bobbling in your face. Guys go crazy from that. We start jumping with ah! This is a whole different generation, my friend. These girls today, they don't even wear jewelry in their head. Everything's in the pussy. They take off their jeans. You could go blind from diamonds, rubies. They got a string of pearls hanging out of their asshole a block long. You could have went down on a chick during the recession and come up a wealthy fucking guy. They're out of their minds. So I went out with this one chick. She goes, I'm a sweater. I, I don't know what a square to it. I didn't know what that was. Two hours later, I'm banging into it like a freight train, right? All of a sudden, it was like a pipe that burst. All this rusty shit starts shooting out across the room, destroys a framed picture of my parents on the wall. I'm going, she shouldn't be hooked to my dick. She should be hooked to the side of a fucking fire truck. I could never, ever get serious with a squirter because they destroyed the fucking mattress. I had to drag the mattress out to my front lawn. I'd be going to three and four mattresses a week laid out on my front lawn that people would go, did Dice get in the bed business? This is what goes on today. You know, it's nice seeing people like you. Is, is this your girl? You don't even know her, right? You like her? Is that something you would be interested in? You know what I mean? Say something. It's okay. Like him. Look how happy he is tonight. We're talking about his girlfriend's tits. I love that shit. You know, girls today, when they get married, their mothers are so miserable that the mother starts in with them going, I don't like the way he speaks to you. That's what happens once you're involved. I don't like the, where do women get that voice, number one? I've never banged one chick that in the middle of banging, she goes, oh, don't take your cock and stick it in my asshole. But the mothers, I don't like because they're miserable. But where's one chick to ever look at her own mother and go, ma, what do you mean you don't like the way he speaks to me? You gotta see the way this guy eats my box. <laughs> If you wasn't my mother, I'd let him eat. As a matter of fact, fuck it, Ma. Get on the couch. Joey, get up there and eat that dried out fucking grease paint. This is the world we fucking live in. Half chicks. President's fingering chicks. This is a crazy world, so you can't go by the whole Bible. We gotta stick to basics. You understand? 
are you guys like a comedy trio? You don't know what it's like to look at the three of you right here. This is funnier than anything I could say on this fucking stage. It's like fucking Manson followers. Look at these fucking guys. What are you? Did you see who was your favorite group tonight? You don't even know. You don't even know who you saw. I'm the best band in town, my friend. Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll know this song. Oh, Miss Muffet sat on a toffee, eating a curds and whey. Long came a spidey, sat down beside he said, hey, what's in the bowl, bitch? These are my songs. Three blind mice, see how they run. Where the fuck they go? Hickory dickory dock. This chick was sucking my cock. The clock struck two, I dropped my goo. I dumped the bitch on the next block. Oh! Little Bo Peep fucked the sheep. Blew a horse, licked his feet. She ate his ass so very nice. Tongued his balls not once but twice. Oh! Jack and Jill went up the hill, both with a buck and a quarter. Jill came down with 250. Oh, that fucking hoa. Oh, Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her old dog a bone. She bent over. She got a bone of her own. Georgie Porgy pudding and pie jerked off in his girlfriend's eye. When her eye was dry and shut, Georgie fucked that one eyed slut. Oh! Let me see some. Hey, I can do anything. Watch this Oh, I'm getting out of here.